Welcome back to my channel, I'm Brian Kafke, and in this video, we're continuing the series, Master Dimensional Modeling Step-by-Step. Step. This video is gonna cover the overall process, and then we can delve down into the details of how you implement them. And you can see here, it's a picture of a kid playing with blocks. That's how easy this is. It's fun, you'll be doing it in no time. Dimensional modeling is also known as the star schema, or that is the product you develop when you use dimensional modeling, which is all the rage these days. It was all the rage 30 years ago, and it's back again. <laughs> it's never gonna go away, I think, because it's an excellent way to organize data for reporting. Now I took a lot of the ideas and I took the steps that I'm going to cover today from the Bible of Dimensional Modeling, which is called the Data Warehouse Toolkit by Ralph Kimball and Margie Ross. This book goes way back. Even the latest edition, unfortunately, is over 10 years old, but it isn't a technical book. It's a process book. It tells you how to go through the process of correctly creating dimensional models, which is the way you organize data for data warehouses. And the first step is select the business process. Then we declare the grain, choose the dimensions, and finally identify the facts. These are very high level steps, so let's jump into what they mean. Select the business process. Now it's important to understand that the business process is not the same as a department. So what would be an example? Something like sales, for instance, or inventory or purchasing. These are really activities, things the business does that drive the business and ultimately spend money or make money. So sales, inventory, purchasing. That's generally the kind of thing you're gonna to wanna to focus on. Not a department like HR, not a department like accounting. Again, it's more the process. And if you think about it, something like sales is a good example because it spans many departments. When you're doing this, you gotta think about what business process could be used to benefit the business the most. Now, most of the time in my experience, high level management will come down and say, we need to get a handle on inventory or sales profitability or understanding our customers. So it's unusual, I think, for the technical person or even the data architect to be driving that process. But you may be doing that. They may say, we know we need to do a better job of our analytics and ask you to help them figure out where they can best do that. Sales is always a good place to start because almost everybody has some form of sales and certainly drives profitability. But if sales has already been done, or maybe there are other more crucial aspects of the business at this point, then you may wanna take a look at those. Once you know the process, you still have to get a little more detail and say, well, what is it you need to know about this process? What is the problem you're trying to address? So it might be we're holding on for inventory too long, or maybe we have too much inventory at different points in time, and even in the stores, they're overstocked with items that don't end up selling the way we hoped. Could just be sales promotions don't seem to be working the way we want, or even if they are, We'd like to be able to track and understand how the sales promotions are actually affecting our sales or our profitability. Now, when you're doing all this too, one of the first things I always feel like, because I'm more of a tech nerd, but I like to get to where is the source of the data? Very often it's coming from relational database type source, whether it's Azure SQL or on-premises, but it could also be coming from streaming, could be flat files, could be invoices that are being sent to the company. Wherever it is, you wanna try to get an early identification of what the sources are so you can start digging into them and see what level of detail, also known as the grain, is provided and what are the attributes that we need to do our reporting on. A critical thing you need to ask at this stage before you jump in too far, and I emphasize this because I have been burned by this, which is you think you got all the data all set to just go right in and wow everybody by doing amazing reports. Then you discover a crucial piece of information or maybe several pieces aren't even there. I had this happen a while back with web analytics. The business wanted to analyze web logs and do clickstream analysis, you know, what people are clicking on, where they came from. And the crucial piece of information, in this case, the product, right, the product that they were interested in was not stored. So in the end, we couldn't identify the most important piece of information that they wanted to analyze. That meant we had to stop, add that to the web logging, and then it really had to wait about six months before they could start to get meaningful answers. So always look at that upfront and identify any holes in the data. Step two, declare the grain. And I'm not talking about food that we eat or something that goes into bread. I'm talking about the level of detail. When I talk about the grain, I'm talking about the fact table. What's a fact, Brian? A fact is not like something I know for certain, like my name's Brian, that's a fact. That's not what we mean. A fact is really a measure, a quantifiable amount related to an event, like how much did we sell? So we have an event like we made a sale. We wanna know how much or how many. We sold three twiddly bits to Brian for 
$50. Now the how many, five, and the how much, $50, those are measures, also called facts. And that would be stored in a fact row. Who, what, how would not go into a fact table. That is a dimension. So when I said Brian bought this, the Brian aspect, the customer would not be in the fact table. We'll see how we track all that related information. It's critical, but the actual facts of the event are in the fact table and they're all measures. The grain is the level of detail of a row in the fact table. For instance, you might have a single line item or you may just have like the order header, a summary. You could have, if it was accounting related, you could have a general ledger journal entry line item, very, very detailed, very granular, right? It's where did we charge? We're transferring $500 to accounts payable and taking money out of another account, those kinds of things. That would be the journal entry line item detail level. But you could also just say our accounts payable has $5,000 in it. So those are two different things. And again, you can see that the account balance is much more aggregated. You might have, as I talked about before in the Clickstream, a single click in a web application's Clickstream data or log versus some sort of aggregation. The grain is how detailed can you get? And you have to balance between the power and flexibility in your reporting versus performance and storage. What do you mean by that, Brian? I want everything. As we know, if you store too much information for the system to perform well, it can't query it, it can't store it effectively, then you have a problem. In most cases, something like line item details for sales is probably something you can get to. But in a case like Clickstream, where you've got individual rows for every click each person made on your website, probably not very feasible. That's a case I had, and we were getting billions of those per day. And you can imagine trying to sort, slice, and dice against that much data. So you have to think of this carefully, and it all is driven by what does the business need to know? In something like sales, they probably want to know what was purchased at each line item, what product. They want to know how much they sold of each product at the line item level. But in Clickstream cases, there's a good chance you can aggregate that and summarize it and just say how many clicks at a given point in time, by customer, by this, by that. So you hopefully can get away with not having to show all of that detail. Or you may be able to limit the amount of click level detail in your log that you have to keep. Maybe you only have to keep a few days or maybe a couple of months and it's doable. So click level, click stream is probably not practical in many cases, but a customer order summary wouldn't be very useful. So again, you have to figure out like what will work. You can't sacrifice the effectiveness of your solution. In general, you want to favor the lowest level of detail possible while achieving good performance and storage. So again, sales would be at the order line item, and anything higher than that would probably not be very useful. Choose the dimensions. So we know facts are measures. They're quantifiable things. The dimensions, though, are what would give it context. So it's like what, who, when, when did this event happen? So dimensions describe the event. Who, what, where, when, how. Dimensions provide the filters and groupings for queries. Now we call them slices and dices if you use the things like Tableau and Power BI. We want to look at a specific store, so we would filter on the store. That's a dimension. Or we might say, give me total sales by store, and now we're aggregating the sales over the stores. Those are dimensions. At a high level, there's one dimension table, like stores, but then you have all the different attributes of the store, like the store number, store name, maybe the store manager, and those would be dimension attributes. Typical dimensions include order date, customer, a store, and a product. And you can imagine all of these are really important to provide any kind of meaningful information about our sales. Now, a strange thing in dimensional modeling is denormalizing dimensions as good. That's crazy. I learned in my OLTP design class, you want to make sure you normalize third, fourth, fifth level normal forms. Not how you do dimensional modeling. In dimensional modeling, we want to get things so that it's the easiest way possible for the business to use it in reporting. And dimensional modeling, the star schema, is generally the best way to do that. And it's highly recommended by tools like Power BI and Tableau to use this way of formatting your data. Now, an example of not doing this properly would be what AdventureWorks, the data set that you get from Microsoft, they give you a data warehouse, supposedly dimensionally modeled, but then they did this strange thing. They created separate dimension tables for a product category and another one for subcategory and then another one for product details, which forces you to join these three tables in your dimensions 
to be able to get all the product information you need. Now, when you require somebody to join dimension tables together, as opposed to fact to dimension table, you are doing what's called snowflaking. And you don't want to snowflake. You don't want to have one dimension joining to another. That's really bad. It causes all kinds of problems and confusion. Don't be that person. And finally, step four, identify the facts, AKA measures. So I want to be clear here. We're not talking about things we know for certain, like it's a fact, the world is not flat. That is not the kind of fact we're talking about. We really mean metrics or measures. So think of it in those terms and it can save yourself some confusion. So we need to select the metrics we want to store and query on about the event. This is how much, how many. So how many units were sold and how much did the person pay for it? Could be how much did they pay in taxes? What was the unit price? So all these things are metrics or facts. Order line item quantity, order line item sales amount, sales tax amount, and unit price are all examples of facts. And all the facts must match or be at the same grain level. What do you mean by that, Brian? That's kind of confusing. It just means that if your detail in your fact table is at the line item level, then the quantity should be for that line item. The sales amount should also be for that line item. And all the columns should match at that level. You don't want to have something that's summarized mixed in with something which is at a more detailed level, or that will cause a lot of problems in your reporting. And ideally, facts are additive. Now, there's additive, semi-additive, and non-additive types of facts. I'm not going to get into explaining those at this point in time. I will say additive simply means that I can summarize them nicely and easily across all the different dimensions. So if I think of something like total sales amount, right? I want to get to the total sales amount, we'll say by store. I can just say some sales amount by store. Done. Or I could say some sales amount by store by salesperson. Or I could say some sales amount by customer. The idea is I can just add up sales amount and it works out really nicely. You might think, isn't that true of all quantitative measures we'd have? Not really. If you had something like profitability percentage, percentages, if you think about it, don't add up. You can't take 50%. We had a 50% profit margin on this item and 40% on that item. It doesn't mean you can add it and get 90%. So that type of case is not one where it's additive. There's different ways we can handle additive and semi-additive, and we'll see that later on. But just know that right now, it's best if you can get additive, because it's a lot easier to work with. So wrapping up, we are talking about the dimensional modeling process and the four steps to get to the star schema. The first step is select the business process. And we said that sales is one of the easiest ones to start with, but it should be a process like sales or inventory and not a department because a department will lead us into a stovepipe solution that doesn't support all the business needs. So we're looking at things that really cross different business departments. We declare the grain and remember the grain is not something we eat. Grain is the level of detail we plan to be reporting on. And this is something that you want to declare to the business. This is the level of detail I'm going to be giving you. And when you demonstrate, do kind of mock-ups or POCs, you want to make sure you're showing them what they can and can't do with that. Because if they want to go lower than the grain you're providing, they're not going to be able to do that. And it's not a trivial thing to change it. Choose the dimensions. The dimensions are the descriptive data, the who, what, when, where, why type of thing. Anything that describes the event, those are your dimensions. And the facts are measures or metrics about it. How many, how much, those are the things you're going to see in facts. And by the way, there are times when you don't actually have a fact to go on. Seems strange, but sometimes you're doing something like maybe questionnaires and you wanna do analysis against what the answers were to questionnaires and how many you got, and you don't really have any quantifiable measures. They call those factless fact tables, kinda weird, I know. But the bottom line is you end up really just counting the number of rows per dimension. You'll still have a fact table, but you don't really have any measures in it. That's it for this time. I want to thank you. Please like, share, subscribe. And when you subscribe, don't forget to turn on notifications because then you're not going to find out nothing. And what would be the point? So do that. And until next time, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Thank you.